After a restless night at the Capsa Hotel, we started our day at Tokyo's Haneda Airport, hoping ANA's The Room business class would finally give us the comfort we've been craving. But as we prepare for this 13-hour flight, the question remains, will it live up to the hype? We've heard so much about this flight, and honestly, we're excited to see if it's everything it's cracked up to be. It's been a long trip already, so we're definitely ready for some luxury. Fingers crossed for a great flight. Stick around to see the insane price tag for this flight and our honest review. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are flying on what we think is going to be the greatest flight of our life. We're gonna fly on ANA's The Room from Tokyo Haneda to New York's JFK. We are so excited for this flight. Stay tuned and we'll show you everything the room has to offer. Tokyo Haneda's Terminal 3 was buzzing with activity as we made our way to check in. Okay, you have the final destination? Yes. Check-in was smooth and easy, exactly what you want for a long haul flight. The staff were friendly and it didn't take long before we had our boarding passes in hand. This is one of ANA's primary hubs and they're known for their efficient ground service. True to form, our check-in was smooth and efficient, as expected from a top tier airline like ANA. The staff were professional and friendly, which is always a plus when you're gearing up for a 13 hour journey. Immigration was a breeze too. No long lines, just smooth sailing. Haneda is one of the busiest airports in the world, yet it consistently ranks as one of the most punctual. And you can see why. It's a well-oiled machine. And when you're about to embark on a 13 hour flight, the last thing you want are delays before you even board. The airline operates several daily flights between Japan and the US, and they've refined this process to ensure things move more quickly. Once through security, we headed straight to the ANA lounge, expecting a premium experience before boarding. ANA is known for its omotenashi, or Japanese hospitality, so we were hoping the lounge would reflect that. The seating was comfortable and the space was quiet, perfect for a bit of relaxation before a long flight. But when it came to the breakfast options, we were a little underwhelmed. Considering this was a flagship lounge at their main hub, the selection was fairly basic. Nothing particularly memorable. It's breakfast, sure, but for a premium cabin lounge, we were expecting more variety. One thing the lounge does well is offer a quiet, peaceful atmosphere. The seating areas are spacious, and it was nice to have a bit of downtime before boarding. But compared to our experience in JAL's Secure Lounge, the ANA's lounge felt more like a functional rest area than a luxurious pre-flight experience. All right, guys, after a quick shower, that shower was actually really amazing in the bathroom there at the ANA Lounge. The lounge, however, has nice seating, but just looks a lot to be desired it when it comes to the food. I know it's breakfast, and the breakfast offerings usually in lounges aren't that strong, but this one was particularly weak. <laughs> in my experience, having lived in Japan for five years, it doesn't really get much better. So that's kind of what you get. All the Japanese lounges, both gel, and a and are kind of uh, a little on the weak side, I would yeah. say. But everybody's friendly. It's yeah. a nice spot to... Uh, Very clean. Now we're just out in the uh, airport terminal, anxiously awaiting our yeah. party. See you guys in a bit. Just as we were about to board, 
they flagged us. Out of all the passengers, we were the only ones not allowed on the plane. We didn't know what the heck was going on, and nobody could really give us any answers. They just kept asking for our home address, our phone numbers, and some other information that we've already given. Turns out, we still didn't get an answer, but they at least let us board the plane. Boarding started on time, and we were eager to see if ANA's The Room lived up to its reputation. One thing that stood out during boarding was that the business class shared the jetway with premium economy and economy passengers. This is not uncommon, but when you're paying for a premium experience, you might expect a little more exclusivity. First class, on the other hand, gets its own jetway, which adds to the sense of privacy and luxury. That's something we didn't experience on JAL's A350-1000 either. JAL's boarding felt more streamlined, with a clear separation for each cabin. It may seem like a minor detail, but when you're paying for business class, those little touches can make a difference in how you feel about the overall experience. We're gonna switch, so I'm gonna do 5E. 5E and F. Yeah, you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. First impressions of the room, it's big and you can definitely feel the privacy in space. At first glance, it looks like the perfect setup for a long haul flight. The seats are wide, there's ample leg room and you can really stretch out. But as we settled in, we started to notice a few things that didn't quite match the height. While the design prioritizes space, the actual seat felt stiff. After sitting for a while, you start to realize that it's not as comfortable as it looks. It's hard, and no matter how much you adjust, it's difficult to find a comfortable position. This was the first sign that maybe this flight wasn't going to be as restful as we hoped. The 777-300ER is a workhorse for ANA, especially on long haul routes like this one from Tokyo to New York. The plane itself is great, has plenty of range, and it's known for its reliability. But compared to the A350-1000 we flew on on gel, there's a noticeable difference. The A350 is wider and feels more modern while the 777, although reliable, feels like it's showing its age a bit. Exactly. The A350-1000 has those ultra-quiet engines, which makes for a much more peaceful flight. In contrast, the 777, while not loud, doesn't quite have the same level of quiet comfort. It's small differences like this that start to add up when you're flying for 13 hours. Oh, it's a bag. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. Actually, that'll come in handy. We use those all the time. Nice. That's actually really cool. Yeah. The amenity kit was functional, but not particularly exciting. We got an Edinger bag, a Veda lotion and lip balm, and a tote bag. ANA also offers free Wi-Fi, which is a nice touch. But in terms of luxury, it felt a bit underwhelming. Yeah, when you think of premium cabin amenity kits, you expect something that adds to the experience, something that makes you feel pampered. But this felt more like a standard offering. Nothing in it really stood out, and the products were pretty basic. It's just another example of how the little details can enhance, or in this case, detract from the overall experience. The laboratory was clean, which is always a good sign on a long flight. ANA offers toothbrushes and mouthwash, and the bidet toilet was a nice touch. But other than that, it was pretty standard, nothing that screamed luxury. It's the kind of lavatory where you appreciate the cleanliness, but there's nothing in there that makes you feel like you're flying in a premium cabin. No special soaps or lotions, just the basics. Again, functional, but not extraordinary. So we're in right now. One of the better aspects of the room is the in-flight entertainment. The screen is large and clear, and the system is responsive. 
They had a decent selection of movies and shows, including some new releases and a variety of international content. It's the kind of system that will keep you entertained for most of the flight. For the flight, ANA provided their branded headphones, which were sufficient. However, the ear cups were a little small, and so they didn't quite cover the ear fully and provide that noise canceling that you're looking for for a long haul flight such as this. I am alone. We will have duty free talk after the meal service. Please order duty free items on your main TV. We will be closing our duty free talk one hour before arrival. And it's about two hours before arrival, we will have the breakfast. We have drinks and a snack available. So I'll start with the sparkling water, and then do you have any um, uh, ANA like uh, like unique drinks that? Oh uh, yes, couples juice. Ah yeah. This is any of the drinks. Thank you. The kabosu, original. Should I with sparkling water? Uh, ice? Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. This is couples juice. Oh, okay, Enjoy. great! Thank you so much. <laughs> Should I ask if they serve one? This is past the emo color boy, yes, this one. Shaking and bacon. Shaking. Oh, wow. How different they smell. So, this is like a barley um, yogi, like in some chocolate. You could do this one, Bob. Thank you so much. How about it? It's so okay. Yeah. This one's so big, it's just like a hard, hard alcohol. This is the sweet potato. Ah. Uh. I thought it would taste like sweet potato. <laughs> yeah. Pasta yeah. okay. Now we come to the first meal service. Both Kai and I opted for the Western menu and it kicked off with an amuse-bouche of ANA's original chili pie stick and pastrami chicken, cheese and olives. It was a simple and tasty way to start the meal service.
The appetizer was beautifully presented. Matcha bread and pickled fish roe, marinated high sugar tomato and sweet shrimp, jelly lobster, and simmered octopus in roasted green tea. It definitely looked like an artistic display, but honestly, the flavors didn't quite hit for us. Yeah, I agree. The appetizer felt very thoughtful, and I could tell a lot of care went into the presentation. However, it just wasn't to our taste. The shrimp and jelly lobster had an unusual texture, and the sauces, though interesting, didn't really work for us. This is a marinated high sugar content tomato with sweet shrimp with two sauces, herb and kiwi fruit miso, with jelly lobster. Why do you gotta put everything in? Jelly? In jelly. I think you say, why do you have to put everything on me? Like, but you get put your in on top? Try the last one. Then came the mains, and this is where things were really improved. I went for the flounder manure with scalloped tartare and red wine sauce. The fish was perfectly cooked, tender and flaky, and the sauce complemented it beautifully. It was one of those dishes that really stands out on a flight. I had the braised wagyu beef shank with turnip puree and daikon radish cake, and it was excellent. The beef was tender and flavorful, and the combination of the puree and radish cake added an interesting texture and taste. This dish definitely made up for the appetizer. I got a spoon. Oh, 
know, you gotta get the top the sauce and stuff. For dessert, I ordered everything they had. The Japanese chestnut cream cake, the cheese selection, and fruits. The chestnut cake had a nice texture but lacked a bit of flavor. The cheese plate was standard, blue, wash rind, and hard cheeses. Good, but not exceptional. Overall, dessert was just okay. Nothing too exciting. And now for the part of the flight we were really hoping would impress, the bed. Unfortunately, this was where the experience truly fell short. I'm six feet tall and I had to lay at an angle just to fit. The seat was hard, there was no mattress pad, and the two small pillows didn't do much to improve things. I had the same issue. For a seat that's supposed to be lie flat, it was anything but comfortable. I kept tossing and turning trying to find a comfortable position, and it just wasn't happening. It's disappointing, especially after all of the positive reviews we've seen on this flight and hard product. Gotta lay at an angle. Yeah, and then when you go up, you gotta be, you gotta readjust. Like, <sighs> oh. I tried the rice ball set, which was simple and satisfying, but again, not something that wowed us. The smoked chicken sandwich was a little bit dry, but had a decent flavor with miso ginger sauce. These mid-flight options were just okay. Not bad, but nothing memorable. For breakfast, I went with the continental option. Croissants, pumpkin bread, and fruit. It was light and fresh. It wasn't anything super exciting, but I actually really enjoyed it. I opted for the frittata with tomato sauce. It was fine, the frittata was soft, and the sauce added some flavor, but overall it was pretty standard. After such an exciting main course, the breakfast felt like a bit of a letdown. So after 13 hours in the air, it's time to share our final thoughts. ANA's The Room offered a mixed bag of experiences. Some great, some just okay. The space and privacy were impressive. The main courses during dinner were fantastic. But when it comes to comfort, the bed was a real letdown. And that's what really stuck with us. The seat looks incredible, but doesn't deliver when you really need it. After comparing this with our previous experience on JAL's A350-1000, it's clear that while ANA's The Room has its strengths, it might not be the ultimate business class seat it's hyped up to be. Don't get us wrong. There were plenty of positives, especially with the service, which was warm and attentive throughout the flight. But at the end of the day, when you're paying for a premium experience, Comfort matters, and ANA fell short in that department. For us, it's not just about the food, the entertainment, or the fancy amenities. It's about whether or not you can get off a 13 hour flight feeling rested and ready for whatever comes next. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case here. We'll always appreciate the opportunity to try something new. And while this flight had its highs, it also reminded us why it's important to find what works best for you. So, if you're considering ANA's The Room, keep our experience in mind. It might be perfect for some, but for us, it didn't quite hit the mark. After flying both JAL and ANA business class, 
I think it's safe to say we choose another airline for our next long haul flight. A&A service was solid, but the food was inconsistent and the seat was just plain uncomfortable. For the $10,000 price tag, a as The Room didn't live up to the hype. There are other airlines that offer more comfort and better food for that price. While the space was great, the lack of comfort, especially in the bed, really detracted from the overall experience. All right, guys, until next time, stay curious. Love you.